Okay, cool. Um, so, designing for virtual reality at Sketchfab. So, let's talk about that. So, before we dive in, uh, let me just introduce myself. My name is Maurice Bay. I work at Sketchfab. Um, so, this is my Sketchfab account and my Twitter account, if you want to follow me. So, what is Sketchfab? Um, so, Sketchfab is a platform where people can um, publish, share, and discover 3D content on the web. And our vision is that in the future, um, 3D content will be easy to produce and consume, um, just like photos and videos. And uh, virtual reality will be a uh, key for that. So today we have half a million users and we host uh, more than 1.3 million models on the site. And basically you can see Sketchfab as the YouTube for 3D content. So virtual reality UX basics. Um, so let's talk about that. Um, like any other interface, um, you need to know who you are designing for. Um, and VR uh, in your application must solve an actual problem and add value to the, to the experience. And like any other interface, you need to follow uh, usability best practices like user control, feedback, um, proper language. Um, but there are a few more things you need to know and care about, especially for VR. So the first thing you need to know is your hardware. Um, so we just saw uh, all the different kinds of hardware you, you have uh, on the market right now. Um, so on the left, um, you see the, the more affordable devices uh, like the Google Cardboard and Gear VR. Um, these headsets have head tracking, so they can uh, turn on uh, the camera with your head. And they only have uh, a few buttons. Um, uh, on the cardboard, you only have one button. So this is a bit difficult for your user interface. On the, on the left, or on the right on the screen, um, you have the, the best headsets, uh, which have position tracking. They can follow you in the room. Um, but they also have track controllers, uh, controllers um, you can track in space. And in between, we have uh, the Google Daydream, um, which has head tracking, but also has a, a small controller that comes with, with it. So you need to know your hardware to know what you can do. Uh, the second thing you need to care about is a sense of presence. Um, the sense of presence is the feeling of being in the, the space uh, in virtual reality, um, instead of just having two screens in front of your eyes. So um, to achieve that, um, what you need is low latency um, and a perfect uh, movement tracking. Um, you need to have high frame rate and you have to work uh, on your application to, to achieve that. Um, so you need to make sure that your application renders fast. The other thing you need to, to care about um, in your VR application is um, uh, care about motion sickness. Uh, so basically you just don't want your users to be sick when they use your app. Um, and it's, it's quite easy in VR actually. Um, if I had to, to mention two rules to prevent motion sickness, the first one would be maintain head tracking. Um, so you never move the camera when the head is not moving. Um, the second rule is avoid acceleration uh, because Imagine you, you are in a car in VR. Uh, if you accelerate, um, people will want to throw up. So if you really have to move the user in VR, um, do it at linear speed. And last, last thing you need to care about is eye strain. Um, the screens in VR are just a few centimeters away from your eyes. So this is why your eyes are converging. Um, and if you force the user to focus at different distances, like uh, closer than far, uh, it, it can cause eye strain. Um, so avoid that. And also um, when you try to display very tiny objects, very close, it's really hard to focus on very close objects near your eyes. So th this was just the basics for of VR. Um, there are many more things you need to care about, but um, maybe we'll hear about that later. 
Um, now I'm going to talk about how we brought Sketchfab into virtual reality. So Sketchfab, Sketchfab um, initially is just a website where you can see 3D models and um, it all started with a Google Cardboard. Um, when the Cardboard came out, we decided that we should have virtual reality on, on Sketchfab. So we had something very rough. You could just pass a, a parameter in the URL to enable a VR mode. Um, when you turn your head, the model wasn't really moving in the same direction that your head. So it was very rough, but it kind of worked um, because it opened new possibilities to, for new experiences. Um, for example, um, this is uh, doctors in Miami. Um, they use Sketchfab to visualize a, a 3D scan of a baby girl who was born with a heart defect. Um, and this allowed uh, them to plan the surgery uh, that seemed impossible at, at first. So um, basically the surgery, the surgery actually worked and now the baby is doing well, I think. So, so this opened new possibilities for, for 3D models. Um, so then in, in late 2015 tw and in 2016, uh, all the major consumer headsets came out. Um, the Gear VR, uh, the Oculus Rift, and the HTC Vive. They all came out uh, at the same period almost, and they all came with their own app store um, that only accepted nat native apps. Um, and the thing is that we are a web platform, so, so we decided to create a, a native app. Um, so we built uh, our application with um, the Unity engine. Um, and we decided to only have like a, a showcase of the best models we have on the site. Um, so it allowed us to experiment a lot around the user experience. And we, while building the application, we tried to answer a few questions. The first question was, how do you browse content in VR? So we said, hey, we are in VR, we should have like a 360 um, grid where we can explore all the models. Um, so that's what we did. Uh, we, do, we did this menu where you can, you're surrounded by, by content. Uh, but it turned out that it was really annoying, especially when you're sitting in your couch. Uh, you cannot really uh, turn around. And it actually correlates with this study from Vertigo um, that show that people don't really look around much uh, when they watch 360 videos. So it was kind of, I think we, it was a mistake to have a, a 360 menu. Um, the other question we tried to answer is how do you move around in VR? So locomotion in VR is still a non-solved problem, uh, I think. Uh, people are still trying many things, uh, but for us what worked is um, limited teleportation. So in the 3D space, we had, we had um, the, the the few predefined spots where you could teleport to. So all you had to do is just point on the on the marker and click, and you just we would we would just teleport there. Um, and it worked really well for us because um, it worked with all the device we wanted to support, uh, especially with the Google Cardboard where you only have one button. And it also allowed us to to control the experience better because in VR. Emotions can be um, more intense than in real life. So in some scenes where things were scary, um, you could be, they could be even scarier in VR also. So we control the experience by having hotspots in safe places. Uh, another question we tried to, to answer was, what should menus look like? Um, so in this application we made with Unity, um, we have this menu that appeared when you look down at your feet. Um, it was a smart way to trigger the menu because we only had one button on Google Cardboard and the button was used for teleportation. Um, but it turned out to be painful for your neck uh, because you always had to look down. Um, also doesn't work well when you're sitting on a chair or on, on a couch. So something big for us was WebVR. Um, all the browsers uh, started to work on WebVR specification. 
So basically, WebVR is a specification that allow um, web applications to access the VR uh, hardware. So we implemented WebVR uh, in our own viewer, um, and it made everything much easier. So all you had to do is just click on the button, and it would it will it would send the the, the scene into your VR headset. And in this implementation, we fixed all the problems we identified with the Unity app. Uh, now you can now teleport anywhere. Um, the menu no longer breaks your neck, and so on. But implementing WebVR wasn't enough for us to, to provide a good experience because uh, all the content we have on the site was made by many people and not uh, necessarily compatible with VR. So what we had to do is create uh, an editor where people could define the scale of their model uh, because we, we have no idea if your model is just very small or, or giant. Um, and instead of measuring your model and setting uh, distances and so on, what we, what we came up with is uh, this editor where you can uh, resize your model and comp compare it with an avatar. Um, so you can have a, a rough idea of what it would look like in VR. It, it's really easy and people are having fun with it. So some people even gave a name to the avatar and naming, name him uh, Dave. I think. So as you can see, we, we are following a very iterative process. Um, we just implement what we need, uh, we learn, and then we improve uh, what we have. Um, and now the next step for us is to build a, a full VR experience um, where you can browse all the content without having your, to remove your headset. Right now you have to jungle between your web page and the headset. And in the, in the, in the few weeks, uh, you will be able to browse all the content dire directly in VR. So to, to conclude this presentation, I will just talk briefly about uh, where VR is heading. So the first thing you will see in the, the few months or in, or in the few years is obviously more content uh, for, for VR. So you will see more game content, more movies. Um, this one is uh, Dear Angelica. It, it's remarkable because it's a movie for VR, but it was made in VR as well. You will have more applications like uh, Google Earth in VR. And of course, you will see more user-generated content, uh, like this um, painting made by uh, Liz Edwards in Oculus Quill and available on Sketchfab. In the coming month as well, you will see cheaper hardware. Um, this is an initiative from Microsoft uh, and its partners. Um, the goal is to have uh, cheaper headsets um, that will probably work with inside-out tracking. Um, so this will happen in the, in the coming months. Okay, so next year's. <laughs> um, you will get also better hardware, uh, faster graphic cards, uh, probably eye tracking, uh, inside eye tracking, maybe body tracking. Here you can see Mark Zuckerberg trying uh, VR gloves. And and in the next month and, and, and years, you will see um, the rise of WebVR. Uh, all the browsers are working on WebVR. So you can see Firefox, um, Google with Chrome and uh, Android, uh, Microsoft with Edge. Um, Oculus actually launched a new browser called Carmel. And Samsung uh, on the Gear VR has uh, Samsung Internet. Um, Chrome Android and Samsung Internet are, are interesting because they are the two uh, browsers that actually have WebVR in production now. And um, notably, um, Safari is missing from the, the picture. In the near future, you will also have um, more libraries for developing applications in WebVR. Um, Right now, you can uh, use A-Frame from Mozilla and React VR from um, Facebook to develop um, applications with WebVR. 
I actually use A-Frame a lot to prototype uh, interfaces. So if you want to prototype quickly with web techno technologies, you, can, you should use A-Frame. Uh, talking about prototyping, um, you will also get um, new tools for proto prototyping. Um, on the left, you have uh, the Unreal Engine VR editor, and on the right, the Unity editor VR. And also um, on the web, you will get uh, new prototyping tools like uh, WebVR Studio, Visor.io, and Pronto VR that will let you prototype and build interfaces directly from your browsers. And maybe the future will be uh, mixed and augmented reality. And that's it for me. If you have any questions. Over there. Hey, um, you uh, mentioned A-Frame, uh, yep. et cetera, as part of the prototyping. Yep. So would you not use it in production then, or? Um, I haven't used it in production. Uh, I'm mostly using it for prototyping because at Sketchfab, we use our own uh, framework for 3D and WebGL. Um, maybe it works in production, but I haven't tried it. Okay, thank you.